good morning, Elizabeth Darby. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Sister Victoria. Camelia, good morning. Good morning, Sister Valentine. Sister Cindy Jones. Sister Janice, good morning. Thanks for joining us so early. Good morning, Carl and Roderick. Sister Pauline, good morning. Sister Margaret Hackett, good morning. Good morning, Annie Johnson. And Marissa Williams, Philip, good morning. And Davis, good morning. It's been a while. Cindy and Philip, good morning. Josie Luis, good morning. Kathy Ragu, good morning to you. Francis Gittins, good morning. We're just about getting ready to start our online worship. Beverly, good morning. Sister Phyllis Maureen, good morning. Kendra Lewis, good morning. Leslie Boyce, good morning. Elder Gill, good morning. Sister Angie, good morning. Sister Marjorie Williams, good morning. Jasmine James, good morning. Good morning, Cordelian and Marcus and the girls. Bella Bella, good morning. Tanisha, good morning. Sister Light, I lead your light, good morning. Priscilla Noel, good morning. DPA, good morning. Sister Naomi and Kenny says, good morning. <laughs> the Prescott family, good morning. Pastor Batiste, James Batiste, good morning. E meus amigos que estão em Brasil, bom dia, a paz do Senhor. Lyndon Marshall, good morning. Sister Rosa Wilson. Good morning. Sister Joan and Neil Church. Patricia, we 
You have just about five minutes again before we get started. Melissa Frederick and the Cross V's. Good morning. Myrtle Phillips, Mother Tyson, and Diane Dixon. Good morning. Sister Vilma George, good morning. Jasmine Stewart, good morning. Sister Huggins, Saraya, and Isaiah, good morning. Sister Dolores Levy, good morning. Some of the names going up so fast, I'm missing some of them. Hey, Darrell, good morning. Good to see you on. Sister Marilyn Ash and Martin, Michael Martin. As you can see, Sister McDowell is here. Hi, everyone. Good morning. We can get... We still have a few minutes again. It's about three minutes. Let me just take some time to look at some names there. David Williams, the happy man. Sometimes I miss some names, so please forgive me. The names are coming up so fast. See that? I can't make out that name. Indiana Francis. Fancy Lang, Lydia. Lydia Laforce, Good morning. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Rodriguez, Marilyn Isaac, good morning. Minister Marilyn and Elder Isaac, good morning. We'll have two minutes again. Yvonne Farley, good morning. Bon dia, Bella Bella. <laughs> Catherine Chambers, good morning. Mark, my big brother, good morning. <laughs> Vianne Anderson, good morning. Hmm? Nah, oh. some, some of the names going up so fast, I can't, I can get a chance to see who it is. Okay, we're about to start, why don't you 
get on the phone and WhatsApp, text somebody, call somebody, share this link with them. And we want to let you know, we are also live on Calvary Cathedral of Praise web, um, Facebook, Facebook site. We have linked the good both pages. Good morning, Colin. So we are transmitting simultaneously on both Calvary Pentecostal Church and Calvary Cathedral of Praise. Last Sunday we had some technical difficulties with the quality, so we will be going back straight to the pages. We will not be going to, to YouTube. We'll put the link up or the videos up on YouTube after. So we are only on Facebook this morning. That's Calvary Cathedral of Praise and Calvary Pentecostal Church. And then you can stay right here for Calvary Cathedral of Praise will be transmitting right here on Calvary Pentecostal after. You can choose which page you want to go on. Good morning, Sister Kim. All right, let me see if I can get somebody to open us in prayer. Good, good morning, Sister. Good morning, good Sister morning. Maggie. Sister Maggie. I'm gonna see if I can get his volume up a little higher. Okay, I'm gonna put you live so that you can open us in prayer, please. Hello. Go right ahead. Good morning, Sister Charmaine, Pastor McDowell, Calvary family. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Sister Maggie. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, pleasant good morning to each and everyone. We just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being there. Thank you for Facebook. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank God for the opportunity. Amen. Give God thanks. And uh, at this time, we just want to, I just want to encourage everyone to strong, remain steadfast. Eyes on the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. Can you speak up a little louder, Sister Maggie? Our Lord and Savior. So yeah. Encouraging everyone to keep keep steadfast, strong, eyes on the prize. A good to what? Is it cracking up? Please to press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So let's keep pressing. Some more. Even when we don't see anything coming, it's hot. We keep on pressing. And that's our goal. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you. We thank you for the opportunity, my God, to share your word, to come together in this pandemic and to give thanks and some praise, to give honor and glory. We give you praise, Lord God. We bless your name. Yes, we praise you, Almighty God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for Facebook and all of social media where we can find our own individual ways, Lord God. We give you thanks. We thank you for pastors. Thank you for evangelists. We thank you for missionaries. We thank you, God, Lord, for teachers of the word. We give you thanks and praise. We thank you, God, Lord, for the individual, oh God, Lord, together. <coughs> and the give of the time, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God. We pray you for each and every one. We thank you for those of God, Lord, who are, my God, feel, the mission feels, suffering, my God, tired of listening. Thank the praise for them and to keep on strengthening them. We thank you for each and every one. We thank you, God, Lord, for our government. Thank you for this stuff, oh God. Even unto them, my God, to leave this country, to lead in this pandemic, we give you thanks and praise. So God, we just may continue to hands upon each and every one. And one thing. Thank you, and we appreciate each and everyone's commitment. Thank you for and my 
my God. Timeless. What? Save of God. Okay. And we give you thanks and praise. Keep on them making a difference in our lives. The one we have touched, my God. We give you thanks and praise. We strengthen each and every one. And every woman, every boy, every girl. Oh God, Lord. Then, oh God, Lord, difference in this world. No, we are not. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Maggie. We had a little cracking up in the transmission there, but thank you so much. God bless you. Well, saints, I want to encourage you this morning to worship the Lord with us. Get ready to lift your hands. Get you ready to open your mouths. Get ready to just bless the name of Jesus. And sometimes we search our vocabulary to look for words. And we fall short. It's difficult to find words to express the greatness of our God. But to tell us hallelujah is the highest note of praise that we can come with, with in any language. So I want you to join with us and say hallelujah. That's all. Simply say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
lift your voices in.
like him <clears throat> and there is none to even be compared with him worthy worthy is the Lamb of God if you believe that to be through truth come on and why don't you just praise him why don't you just give him glory right where you are Magnify him in the beauty of holiness. He is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. Worthy is his holy name. Come on, say Jesus again, Jesus. hallelujah father we are so grateful to know that we serve a God who's worthy of praise worthy of all glory and honor and all power belongs to you we thank you God for your goodness towards us and your your loving kindness and your mercies oh God thank you father for you heal us when we are broken in body you strengthen us oh God when we're feeling weak you sustain us oh God and you show up just when we need you. We say thank you, oh God. You've never left us. And in spite of what's happening around us, we have the assurance of your presence. Your presence is with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray you be glorified in the midst of our praises. You inhabit the praises of your people right where they might be in their homes. Some may be lying in hospital bed, but God, as we praise and sing the songs and give you glory, God, you would minister your presence and you would strengthen, you would heal, you would, you would save, oh God. You would deliver in the precious name of Jesus. Your name will be glorified and your people will testify of your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Meus amigos que estão no Brasil, seja bem-vindo aqui. Worship online. Que bom que vocês estão conosco hoje para louvar o Senhor e glorificar seu santo nome. 
Louva o Senhor conosco quando nós cantamos, mesmo se não entendam as letras, mas louva o Senhor. Amen. Uh, Colin, if you can just drop the volume on your... I'm getting a feedback. Drop the volume on your, your device. I'm still here. The Portuguese coming through. We have someone who's going to testify. Okay. Drop the volume. Drop your volume. All right. I'm getting you now. The volume on the Facebook. Eh? I'm still hearing you coming. Still hearing myself coming back loud. All right. Speak up loudly. I'm hearing you clearly. I wish I could get some more volume. I'm wondering if. All right. Speak as loudly as you can. We have a young man who the Lord has been really good to, and he want to testify and share the goodness of the Lord in his life. So I want you to listen carefully. I hope the, the volume is loud enough. And as he testify about the goodness of God, or oh, he hang up. All right. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Well, um, I just want to give a testimony and give all thanks and praise to God. Um, I, as many of you know, or if you don't know, I had the coronavirus, um, and it all started actually. The whole the whole thing started way back on February, excuse me, March 13th of this year. I was. Um, Sitting down, I was looking at my mom, and all of a sudden I realized that she was acting a bit strange. And she ended up passing out right in front of me, and we ended up calling the ambulance. And when the ambulance came, you know, I was checking for her pulse, and I realized there was no pulse. Thank God, I just woke up, and the ambulance took her and said that her heart had stopped for about 30 to 45 seconds, and they realized that she had a, an ongoing issue that was undiagnosed and they had to do an emergency surgery and give her a pacemaker. So from that, all my family came up. Uh, I remember this was March 13th. So now March 15th comes around and I realized that I'm just not feeling good. I had a very high fever. I even told my brother, why is the heat so low um, in the house? He said the heat is high as it's ever been. And I'm freezing. I'm using two blankets to keep myself warm. I'm saying I just don't feel that I have pains in my body. I'm coughing like crazy. Oh, and I said, you know what, I'll just take mm -hmm. some Theraflu or Dayquil and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But I just kept getting worse and worse over the next week. So I decided to go to City MD. And in going to City MD, when the guy came out, he looked at me and said, listen, sir, I need you to go right to the ER. You do not go home. You do not make a stop. You need to go right to the ER because I can see that you have double lung pneumonia. You have fluid in both lungs and you have a lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brother Colin, yeah. I'm getting some text saying that then, yeah, you need to speak up a little louder. That's all the volume I have, so I don't know if you can speak up a little louder. Sure, I'll speak louder. All right.
second day I was in, I was in there, I found out that my grandmother passed away. Now, again, many of you may not have known, but I've been, I moved back to Brooklyn just to take care of my grandmother and my mother, and it really affected me when my grandmother passed away. Then I found out that one of my brothers had coronavirus, and my uncle also had the coronavirus and was in a hospital, and two of my close friends, one who ended up passing away, also had the virus. Um, and I just said to my, I just said to the Lord, to the Lord, come on, seriously, another thing, come on, like, what else? Come on, I was just so tired and just so frustrated. I was just feeling well. And I said, you know what, instead of, instead of getting down on myself, instead of, you know, blaming God or blaming anything else, I'm going to decide to praise the Lord. So what I did is, I, as the Bible says, you know, call on the elders of the church. So the first thing I did is I called Pastor McDowell, and I thank you so much for everything you've done for me, Pastor McDowell. Pastor McDowell prays for me. <clears throat> Aside from him, he mentioned me in a prayer group, and many people prayed for me. Pastor Roz and also even Bishop called me and prayed for me. Sister um, Sister Joelle, Sister Judy, Sister Judy, and so many people called me. Even now that Sister Allison called me and were praying for me. And I just thank God for every single one of them who were praying for me. Um, are people still having trouble hearing me? Well, one or two. Okay, somebody said they need to turn up their volume because some folks are hearing. Not as I can. I not I, you, not you. I think the, those who are watching. Are you still hearing, Brother Colin, out there? I'm uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, I'll, they're hearing you better. Go ahead. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I decided to call the pastors of the church, and, you know, every single one of them prayed for me. I was My name was in the prayer groups, and everyone was praying for me. And... I just thank God for everything that they have done. You know, and I realized that when I was in there, and I was just really down, and I said that, uh, and I said, you know, what else is going on? And I just felt a certain calmness come over me. And the Lord said to me, trust in me, my child. Trust in me, my child. Trust in me, my child. And no matter what was going on, whether it was what was happening with my mom, who had to get emergency surgery, even me, who, you know, I had double, <clears throat> double lung pneumonia, Fluid of both lungs, the alveoli which capture oxygen in the lung, where all both of my legs were swollen. They were saying that I might have blood clots in my body and it, it may travel to my lung. And I said, Lord, I'm trusting in you. And I trust in the Lord. I just felt a certain calmness come over myself. And I said, You know what? I'll be okay. Many times people will call me and reach out to me, even down to Pastor McDowell. Just about every single day he will call me or text me or try to reach out. Even the one day when he did, I said, Pastor, you give me up. He said, no, I'm still praying for you. Every single person praying for me. And I realized that, you know, I'm blessed. And I was able to go home. I ended up going back for another eight days, and I got worse. But after a while, everyone kept praying for me. I saw people praying for me, down to Sister Mercer praying, sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep for a week and a half. I must have slept about four hours in that week and a half. And um, she would call me sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. People would reach out. I just want to you know, give a testimony about how great the people of God are, especially in Calvary Pentecostal. My brother was able to take care of myself and my mom. He got me food and everything. I was just so grateful for something like that because I was just praying that neither of them got the coronavirus. But by God, neither of them got it. And I, I would just like to say that you know, I feel much better. I'm about 96%. I just want to give all... Um, praise and worship to the Lord that I was able to make it through this coronavirus. I know there are many other people who are in this situation now, and some unfortunately haven't made it. But I just want to give God all the glory. Even up to yesterday, um, when I was when I had the issues with the coronavirus, literally walking about 15 to 20 feet, I wasn't even able to make that. I was in so much pain. I would, I would have so much shortness of breath. I'm an athlete. I play basketball three to four days a week. So for me to not even walk 15 feet without running out of oxygen was crazy for me. But up to yesterday, my mom and I took a 2.78 mile walk all the way to Canarsie Pierce. That's why I want to thank God. Amen. But even something that small, to be able to walk nearly three miles, when two weeks ago, yeah. I couldn't even walk, two months ago, I couldn't even walk 15 feet. And then I also prayed to God and said, Lord, I've been in the hospital for two and a half weeks. Those medical bills are going to be crazy. I just pray that it's not more than $20,000. When I, when I got the first uh, doctor visit, so it was about 2500 I called my insurance company and they said, Colin, we realize you have 
a good amount of money in your health savings account. It's enough to cover your medical bills. I said, okay, but what about my hospital bills? I said, I don't even know what it's going to be because even my mother's bills are crazy. I got my hospital bills. I added it up. It was $99,974. I said, oh, my. I looked to the right and I said, amount due. Zero dollars and zero cents. <laughs> I just started to praise God. Amen. I said, Lord, thank you so much. I thank you so much. I put the phone down and started praying and thanking every single person who prayed for me. Even the people in the prayer group started. I may not know your name. I may not know exactly who's in those groups. But I just want to thank you so much for praying for me. Mm -hmm. I just want to give a direct thanks to Pastor McDowell, Bishop and Pastor Roz, Minister Mercer and her prayer team, Elder Isaac, Sister Jewel, Sister Judy, Sister Judy and Allison, Mariel, the prayer team, and everyone in there. Everyone in the church was praying for me. Even this guy, if you go to Woodruff, you may know him. He's a tall, dark-skinned guy. He has a high top. He was working in Brooklyn, Memphis. He said, Sheldon, Sheldon Grant. My senior, come back to this hospital. Don't worry. You're going to make it. That's when I give thanks to the Lord and praise because he made it to me. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. I declare healing on my body. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Colin, for sharing your testimony with us. God bless you. Amen. Those of you over there who want to just put give some hands up, some thumbs up, some hearts, and give God praise and thanks for his goodness, his mm -hmm. mercy, uh, what he has done for us, and what he will do and continue to do for us. If you have your Bibles, the time is gone so quickly to turn with me to 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians, we're going to share from chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. Meus amigos que estão no Brasil, eu vou ler a Bíblia. Segundo os Coríntios, capítulo 1, versículo 3 a 11. Abre sua Bíblia e lê conosco. Amen, amen. When you get your Bible, just give me some thumbs up. Hallelujah, blessed be the name of Jesus. I want to share for a brief moment on seasons of suffering seasons of suffering second corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 and 11 it says from verse 3 blessed be god even the father of our lord jesus christ the father of mercies and the god of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort we are in, we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound in Christ. So, uh, in verse 6, And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we found, we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our troubles which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired life, even life. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not rest in ourselves or trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead, who believed us or who delivered us from so great a death and do it deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now, got to run through this pretty quickly now. Um, we have recently completed a study on this book on our Thursday night Bible study. And we have found this book to be very interesting, very informative. But out of this letter, this letter is most the most biographical and the least doctrinal of Paul's epistles. It tells us more about Paul as a person, as a minister, and his ministry than any other of his epistles. And if you think you have been 
seen if you've been seeing hardship or, or difficulties and suffering well here Paul makes reference to some of the things that he and the apostle have been going through and how they faced their seasons of suffering as they were comforted of God and he sets to encourage the saints at Corinth as the, he shares their experience with them it is not certain what particular trouble in Asia Paul was referring to here whether it was the turmoil that raised by Demetrius at Ephesus mentioned in Acts chapter 19 or whether it was the the fight with beasts mentioned in 1st Corinthians 15 and verse 32 or some other trouble for the apostles were in turmoil often they experienced great trials for their faith. They were pushed out of measure to a very extraordinary degree above the common strength of men. Or it even beyond the, what the ordinary Christian would normally go through in so much that they, they spared even their life, as he said. And though they should have given up, if they should have abandoned the faith. They should have fainted away. They should have expired. But they didn't. What did they do in their distress? They trusted in God. And they were brought to this extremity, he said, in order that they should not trust in themselves, but in God. He said in verse 9 in our text, We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead you see our extremity is God's opportunity what's important and central to the issue of suffering and affliction are the ways that the Apostle focus us on God in the opening verse of this chapter verse 3 and 4 he described God as one the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ Two, the father of mercies and three the God of all comforts who comfort us in all trouble and when you go down to verse 9 he described him as the God who raised the dead these description of God with the term of affliction and comfort it reminds us that his life or in life there is no bed of roses mm -hmm. because even a rose bed is loaded with thorns we must simply learn to live with the reality that we are not in the Garden of Eden, nor are we yet in heaven, where God will just will be wipe our tears away from our eyes, and where death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain or anything, for the former things would have passed away. Rather, we live in a fallen world where afflictions of various sorts and size exist. Mm -hmm. Amen. Seasons of suffering is definable, but only by God. More often we are at a loss when trying to define our sufferings or the suffering of others. The goal for us is to trust God through that season because he has the best for us in his heart. He knows everything about us. Even the very number or hair on our head are numbered. He also knows the length of the suffering. And though through this suffering, we learn some very important things. One thing we learn from Paul as he explained what he had been through is that God delivers. Amen. Amen. God is a mighty deliverer. The psalmist puts it this way in Psalms 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be delivered or saved from my enemies. He said in Psalms 50 and verse 15. God says this. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Amen. God promises he will deliver us. Amen. So how's that promise working out for you? Have you asked God to deliver you but still find yourself sick and sad and scared and stuck? If he is our deliverer, why isn't he delivering us? Why isn't he delivering on his promise? Well, let me tell you this morning, he is. 
You see, sometimes the way God keeps his promise is painful for us. And sometimes we don't even realize he is delivering us because we don't recognize the way he does it. And if you are sick, if you are sad, if you are scared, if you are stuck, I want to assure you this morning that God is a mighty deliverer. Amen. He delivers Amen. from troubles. He delivers through troubles. And he delivers out of troubles. Amen. But he delivers. Amen. I don't know how or when God will deliver. The one thing I do know is this. God is our deliverer and God does deliver. When we can understand his ways, we can choose to trust his character. Like Paul, whether you are going through, for, whatever you are going through, focus on God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all troubles. And even if it means death, he is the God who raises the dead. Could somebody say amen? Amen. With that kind of focus, Paul said in Romans chapter 5 and verse 3 and 5, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation work it patient, and patient experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which Amen. giveth unto us. Amen. We don't glory for tribulation's sake itself, but rather because the tribulation brings forth something that is a beautiful thing, such mm -hmm. as a deep knowledge of God. Amen. Amen. The Amen. fact is, I won't know that God is a deliverer, except I needed deliverance. I will know that he is a very present help in time of need or trouble unless I find need and or trouble in my life. I will know that he is my healer, except I needed healing. Because of these experiences, those deliverance that I've been through and you have been through, we can testify our God delivers, he saves, he keeps, he satisfies. Because we have first-hand experience. The reason to glory is because we get to see God in action. Hallelujah. The reason to glory is because he said, I, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The reason to glory is because he said, I am the Lord. It's because we are learning and we are having revelation as to what he said he is for this reason, knowing that he sees what we are going through and he is not surprised by what we are going through. And listen, we will be better off when he bring us out of it. Amen. 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 Or when he bring Amen. us through it, or even if he brings us to it, we will be better off at the end. Mm -hmm. Every season of suffering has a starting point. And an ending point. Amen. Amen, amen. Making it through the season requires endurance. Endurance is a word that takes patience and persistence and marries them beautifully together in sweet accord. It means the ability or strength to continue or last, especially despite fatigue, stress, or other adverse conditions. Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 10, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that we have suffered a while, mm -hmm. make us perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. Amen. James said deliverance is required or deliverance required patience. He said in James chapter 1, 3, and 4, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work it patient. But let patience have a perfect work that he may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Glory to God. The complete work is complete faith in God. Bless the name of Jesus. And we must trust in the Lord. Being thankful for all things. We must be thankful not just when things are going good, but also when things are not necessarily going good. The answer is Jesus. We must Amen. praise him or praise him because he is worthy even when this world doesn't treat us the way we think it should or when things are not uh, are going badly. Jesus is still our mighty deliverer and he is still worthy of our sacrifice of praises. Could I get an amen, amen out there? Another lesson through these verses, and I need to run on quickly here, is that God gives comfort. Amen. God gives comfort comfort not just uh, that we might be comforted but that we might become comforters of others amen mm -hmm. 
The comfort that God gives becomes a gift that we learn and we, we, we want now to pass it along to others who might be experiencing the same pain as Brother Colin shared this morning. He was comforted by God and now he wants to comfort others as he share his testimony. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 4, who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted by God. We are not to stress people out and make their life more difficult. We are blessed to be blessings. Amen. amen we are amen, blessed amen. to be a blessing. As a missionary, I stayed in various homes and, and different places. But one of the policies that I had is wherever I go, I want to leave that place better than I met it. In other words, they must want me to return because I've been a blessing. And that should be our, our focus as God blesses us, as God gives us testimonies, as, as God gives us revelation. We want to share it and be a blessing to others. Amen? Let me move on. Another thought from this verse is when we find God's comfort, it is, we need to understand that his comfort is not for just some sufferings. But all suffering. Amen. Notice that yes. this excludes nothing. He is not the God of some comfort. He is not the God of most comfort. He is the God of all comfort. Amen. Amen. He is there for us no matter what we face. We somehow tend to think that our troubles are unique to us and that they are worse than what anybody else would be going through. Mm -hmm. You know, we go in a pity party and nobody knows what we're going through. Nobody yeah. understands. But not only are our trials common to man, according to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 but none of our troubles are greater or bigger than our God there is nothing beyond his power there is nothing beyond his wisdom there is nothing beyond his grace there is nothing beyond his mercy there is nothing beyond his steadfast love there is nothing beyond his goodness hallelujah is there anything too hard for God listen earth has no hurt that heaven cannot heal in verse 10, we see a further result and the positive side of what the apostle learned and experienced. He said, we who deliver us from so great a debt and do it deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. This describes the apostle's perspective of life. To live with hope firmly fixed on God and God alone as his deliverer. The words he has set our hope, as the king, the king James have it, in whom we trust. In the Greek, this represents the perfect tense which here looks at the result of a past event. In this context, the perfect tense looks at the apostle's present state of mind. So this, this was the result of the past experience he is describing. The so great a death followed by God's deliverance. Thus you hear the phrase that he will deliver us. Mm -hmm. Amen. This expressed the apostles confident. Hallelujah. As long as the Lord continue to have a purpose for your life, he will deliver you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. In amen. fact, all deliverance comes from the Lord, whether we realize it or not. The psalmist said in Psalm 16 and verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, or even the God of our salvation. Amen. Our hope then must be fixed on him as our daily blesser, our daily deliverer, our daily sustainer. Hallelujah. Paul's confidence here is somewhat similar to what he says in Philippians chapter 1, 19 and 21, as he expressed God's steadfast love and goodness. He said, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest or my sincere or my intense expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so how now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. He said, for me to live is Christ mm -hmm. and to die. Is gain. What an attitude to have 
in your season of suffering. Amen. You see, the ultimate goal is to be rooted, to be grounded and established in the word of God. And that should be the mark in which we strive for. Whether you have been a Christian for less than a year or over 50 years, the ultimate thing is to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. only in the good times, or that is in the power of his resurrection, but also in the difficult times, in the fellowship of his suffering. Mm -hmm. The plain and simple truth is this. If there is no Jesus in your life, then there is no peace in your life, period. Mm -hmm. Full stop. But if you know Jesus, you know peace in any and in all seasons. Hallelujah. You, Praise Lord. the Lord. Yes. I'm watching the clock on the wall, so let me try to close up here. Let me point out something before I close. Although the list of suffering was a long one, Paul's attitude in general was one of thanksgiving. According to my count in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, between verse 23 and 33, Paul identifies about 18 sufferings that he had been through. But when you compare to how many times he was giving thanks or encouraging others to give thanks, I came up with at least 60 instances when he was giving God thanks for the churches he was writing to or he was encouraging the church to give thanks to God. And he only mentioned his suffering to show how God delivers. He said, for when I am weak, then I am strong. He said, God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. What an attitude to have in times of suffering. And we are certainly going through some times, all of us, because of this pandemic that has hit the world. And we, some of us are suffering more than others. Some are responding in ways, different ways. But listen, according to Paul's admonition, admission or admonition, admonition to us, admonition. I'm getting so excited here. <laughs> We ought to face our suffering with a particular attitude. So let me ask you, and let me remind you this morning, in times and seasons of suffering, understand that it shall turn out for your salvation. Mm -hmm. Understand that God will comfort you in all that you're suffering. Mm -hmm. Understand that it's only for a season. Mm -hmm. It will pass. Understand that God is a mighty deliverer and he has delivered, he will deliver and he will continue to deliver. And you need to keep your focus on the God of all comfort. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what your challenges are. I don't know what your suffering might be. But one thing I do know that God is able to make a way for you where it may seem to be no way. God will come through for you. I guarantee you it because um, we all have our experiences. And let me tell you something. They may be able to take from you what you read in a book or what somebody told you. But when you have an experience with God, they can't, nobody can take that away from you. So thank God for the mountains. Thank God Amen. for the valley. Amen. Thank him for the thank storms you. that he passed you through. Amen. Because I guarantee you, as a child of God, God will work it out for your good. Mm -hmm. I want to pray with you. The time is running. And, and I, I, I just want to encourage you as I pray that to, to stay focused on the God of all comfort. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is able to comfort you because that's who he is. The Amen. God of all comfort. Amen. Come on, let's just pray together. Let's just pray together and believe God right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we bow in your presence and we are so grateful grateful for your love and kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for what you're doing and what you will do. Father, even in this time when there's so much confusion, there's so much uncertainty, we can rest assured in your promises. We can hold on to your word and we can keep our focus on you as the God of all comforts. So right now, I pray that you will just invade homes that have tribulations, the homes that are going through trials home that are troubled right now and you would comfort them in Jesus name. God, you would expel all that the devil is planning and, and trying to do. And God, your will will be done in the lives of your people. Mm -hmm. 
right now we we may be stuck at home and there are things that we cannot do but one thing we can do is to bless your name so i pray god that we would come to the realization that you are still god you're still on the throne and we would acknowledge you for who you are we would bless you at all times we would continue to sing your praises at all times we would magnify you for who you are and even as we call upon you as our deliverer we would call upon you for as our sustainer we understand God that there is nothing too hard for you. So I pray right now for my brother. I pray for my sister. That family who have been going through a hardship because of a loss of job, a loss of income or a loss of a loved one. I pray in the name of Jesus, the God of all comfort, would comfort them right now in a way that you alone can. In the name of Jesus, we might be able to empathize. We may, might we, we might, but we certainly will not be able to identify the way you can because you are touched with the feelings of, of our infirmity. So I pray in the name of Jesus, minister by your Holy Spirit in the precious name of Jesus, that out of this suffering, your name will be glorified. Out of this pandemic, your name will be glorified in the precious name of Jesus. Your people will not fail to give your praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 If you agree with that prayer, would you say amen? amen. Would you say amen? amen? Praise the name of the Lord. What can we do this in again? I can't remember. I think it doesn't see. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. We want you to stick around. Stick around. We want to play um, Our God is Greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. He's our God. He's our God. And I want to encourage you to join with us. Declare it in your home. Declare it wherever you are that our God is greater.
Amen. We're going to ask Brother Marshall to close us up in prayer. Brother Marshall, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, speak up loudly, please, and go ahead. Yes, the Lord. All is stubborn, lovely Lord. Father, this morning we just thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Father, we just want to adore you because you're God all by yourself, Lord. Today, oh God, we thank you for the man of God you have given your word, God, that it has went forth, oh God, in our homes, oh God. And likewise, we would like it to germinate in our hearts, oh God, that we would be better people, oh God. We would understand your word, God, and what you are doing in times like this, Lord. Father, we just bless the man of God today and all the listeners, God, and we thank you for such a powerful word, God, that you are sent for to your people, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you, God, and not live in your presence, but you will be with us as we go through day and times like this, Lord. Just continue to minister to us, and we all we want to say to you is thank you. Hallelujah. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Marshall. God bless you. Well, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. In just a few minutes, maybe just about three minutes or so, Calvary Cathedral of Praise will be coming on. Pastor uh, Roslyn Roberts will be sharing. Worship will be going on. And we will just continue having church in home. Okay? So you can stay right on this page right here because it will be broadcast on this page also. Or you choose to go over on YouTube or if you choose to go on Calvary Cathedral of Praise. But all three pages will be broadcasting simultaneously. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us and being with us in our online worship at home. We encourage you to continue being the church. Don't wait until the church doors are open or the, the lockdown is lifted to express the praises of the Lord in your life. Do it even Amen. while you cannot be in the building Amen. because the Amen. building is not the church. We are the one who constitute the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are building blocks of God's temple. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you continue to be the church. Be a blessing wherever you are in your moments of suffering. Understand that the God of all comfort is with you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Would you just continue to give God praise as we wait on Calvary Cathedral of Praise to start their broadcast. Thank you.